All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. A little bit of uh, housekeeping. I, I posted a link to the meeting notes. You can please please add yourself as an attendee. All right. Do I have a volunteer to be a scribe for the meeting? I can do that. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so already past uh, four minutes. I think we can get started. We've been running this today, but um, if anybody also wants to jump in and um, comment or even run the meeting in the next iterations, I, I feel free to do it. Um, uh, it's open source and we like to have everyone participate. So I think the first item that we have on the agenda is the Cloud Native AI white paper. Alex Jones uh, from AWS and Kate's GPT started this paper and I mean, posted the link. So I think we can share the, the document and then go through some of the comments and iterate through it. If that's okay with everyone. Um, you might just uh, have a quick introduction so you know who we are. Sounds good, So yeah. Sounds good. So maybe we can go around the table and and give ourselves an introduction. So um, we can go by the attendee list. list. So we go, uh, for me, you can go first. And I'll oh, thank you. you at the end. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, so my name is Huamin Chen. I work for Red Hats. I've been with the CNCF for a long time. Actually, I was uh, on the event when CNCF was founded at the you know, Open Source Summit uh, back in uh, many years ago in uh, West Coast, one of the West Coast city of Portland, sorry. And then I was uh, working on the Kubernetes um, before Point One release and has been uh, over multiple releases until I joined the different organizations, uh, uh, CNCF organizations, slashing on different journeys. But most recently, I work for the uh, environmental so sustainability uh, tech, and we created a, a engineering efforts to uh, support this cloud native sustainability. So I think that AI has a huge impact on sustainability in both the application as well as the consumption. So that's why I'm here. Thank you. 
All right, thank you. Uh, Jeremy, Jeremy Eder. Eder. Oh, yeah, I am Jeremy Eder. I'm also from Red Hat. Hello. Thanks for having us. All right. I'm go next. Um, thanks, thanks. Love, I thanks, work Roger. on AI and observability stuff at Honeycomb. All right, thanks, Philip. Uh, Claudia. Yeah, hi everyone. I'm I'm Claudia. I'm from uh, IBM uh, TJ Watson Research Center in New York. Um, so I focus my research mainly on Kubernetes and OpenShift platform uh, on IBM Cloud and uh, bare metal. And I'm focusing on monitoring and observability, also some scheduling for um, HPC and AI training workloads. Awesome, thanks for joining. Uh, Cassandra? Hi, so I'm Cassandra. I'm actually a student. I go to Colorado State University Global and I study computer science. And I had some involvement with the CNCF the past year or so. Like I've been going to the past three KubeCons to teach kids workshops as part of the event. So I've been educating kids how to learn about technology. Awesome, welcome. We got Andre. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Andre. Uh, I'm from Apple, and also like I'm the part of Kubeflow project. I've been in this community for the last for the last five and a half years, uh, mostly working on AutoML and training side. Um, and I'm excited to work with you on the this AI work group together. Welcome. Okay, so we got uh, Philip Carter. I think you already went. Uh, Rob Asker. Hey, uh, good morning, good evening. Not sure where everyone's at. Uh, Rob Esker, I'm with NVIDIA. Um, been bouncing around CNCF since the beginning as well. Uh, sort of look over, over, look after a variety of things kind of horizontally um, at NVIDIA from a product architecture perspective. Um, so first of the workgroup AI um, meetings I've been involved with, uh, actually only really uh, wind of the efforts uh, at last KubeCon in, in Chicago, uh, but have been kind of uh, sort of at arm's length monitoring a lot of the activity and work with Batch. But uh, nice to meet everyone. Thank you. Thanks for joining. We've got Zach Sailor. Yeah, hey. Uh, yeah, I'm. my name's Zach Sailor. I'm at Apple. Uh, on the data platform team, we we ship Jupyter Notebooks as a product or as a service. Um, so I'm also very heavily involved in the the Jupyter open source community. So I'm I'm really here to be a fly on the wall, um, see how folks are are tackling the AI ML problem uh, in the Kubernetes space. But uh, as a as a Jupyter a a front end uh, to that that back end, uh, and I work with Andre and a few others from our team are here as well. Akshay and Russ, I see. Great. It's great to have the Apple folks. <laughs> okay, so RP. You said RP. I think yeah. that's me. Yeah, I'm what's, Russ. What's it, RP, what does this stand for? <laughs> yeah, it's Russ Pandey. I work at Apple with Zach and Andre and Akshay and help like bring notebooks up at large scale for customers to do data preparation. And also, like interested in all like the ML activities, and we were just recently at KubeCon in Chicago, and I think there's a lot of excitement and energy around what's possible and how Kubeflow fits into that mix. So here to kind of learn and start to participate in various ways. Awesome. And I'm, by the way, I'm based in Seattle. Anyone else based in Seattle? Happy to meet up face to face. Great in Seattle. I think some folks are in. The Bay Area, some folks in Seattle, but 
I'm sure a lot of other folks uh, distributed around the world. Austin. Likewise. Cool. All right. So, uh, Victor Liu. Yeah, Victor Liu. Uh, I've been working in industry uh, as a database consultant for almost 30 years. Uh, but uh, recent years, I've been interested in open source, anything open source, both software and hardware, uh, especially uh, AI, security, and edge computing. Awesome. Anushka Mittal. Hey folks, uh, I'm Anushka. I I work at Nirmata. I've recently graduated uh, as a computer science engineer from India. Uh, I've been involved with CNCF for about four years really, ever since I was 17. <laughs> I've been pretty interested in everything open source. And uh, with the AI group here, it was pretty interesting to get involved with and see what's happening. So yeah, here to chop the wood, carry some water here. Yeah. Yeah, we need a lot of that. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jan, Jan Guffman. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jan, and I'm a Ilan. graduate student at the University of Toronto, and I'm studying AI. And like throughout some of my past internships, I've been uh, working on some uh, CNCF projects in like the observability space. And now that I'm studying AI, I kind of, I like this fusion and I'm very interested to learn more about this group and uh, working with everyone. And unfortunately I have to leave early today, but uh, nice to meet everyone. Nice to meet you too. Is is a uh, question, is that a AI program at the University of Toronto, like a specific um, degree? Yeah, yeah. it's okay. like, a, it's a master, it's a master's of science in applied computing. And there's like different concentrations and different streams you can go into. And I'm like in the AI stream. So like, um, that's kind of like my focus. That's interesting. It's good to see that universities are offering programs. All right, Akshay Chitnami. Hey everyone, this is Akshay. Uh, I'm also part of uh, the, um, uh, Apple, uh, data platform at Apple. Uh, same team as uh, Andre, Russ and Jack. Um, we ship uh, Jupyter Notebook as a service for um, everyone at Apple. Great to meet everyone. Nice to meet you too. Uh, Vishal, Shad Harry. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I am Vishal and I work at Nirmata alongside Anushka. I'm a maintainer at Kiver now. And uh, so I'm, I'm here basically to know more about how we can integrate AI uh, with policy and governance and cloud native. So I would like to learn more about that and contribute to the working group as best as I can. Yeah, awesome. So, yeah, there's a lot of security aspects to to secure to um to AI or AI helping security as well. So welcome. Uh and Rin Mancuso. Hi. Um I'm Rin. Um I work with Philip at honeycomb.io. Um I'm a CNCF ambassador and part of the group putting on the booth at AI.dev um in San Jose. Um looking forward to meeting everyone. Yeah, nice to meet you too. I think I got everyone. Uh, anybody else on the call that hasn't spoken yet? There, there's some guy named Ricardo who hasn't mentioned where he's from. Oh, yeah, that's good. That's me. <laughs> yeah, so I'm Ricardo. I'm co-chair of the Tag Runtime. Um, I've been a co-chair for over two or three years, I believe. Um, been you know, involved with the CNCF also for like three or four years uh, with runtime and some of the working groups. I also work for a company called Truera. At this AI space is particularly interesting to me because I work for Truera, which is a AI company. We have a product that creates uh, or offers observability and monitoring for machine learning models and, and data scientists. Uh, so it fits uh, at the end of the machine learning pipeline where you have a full MLOps pi pipeline with uh, data prep, uh, creating the model, then serving the model. And then after you serve the model in production, 
you need to monitor and see how that model is behaving. So that's where the product actually fits in. Uh, we do have an open source project called TrueLens that helps uh, evaluate uh, LLMs. So yeah, so that's my interest in, in AI and I'm happy to meet everyone um, and hope to collaborate in, in all of these initiatives, the Cloud Native uh, white paper, uh, AI white paper, and also the landscape and anything that comes up after that. All right, so I think we can get started with the white paper discussion. Uh, anybody wants to share uh, the white paper? Uh, Plumbing, or or you're you're already taking notes, so uh, I don't know if somebody else wants to share and drive this. This initiative was started by Alex, and he's not present on the call, so I think we got Sean Wilson too. Some join. Sean, do you mind introducing yourself? Uh, sure. Uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, um, I've. Uh, kind of dabbled in AI, AI and uh, yeah, just, uh, I mean, I kind of commented on the paper, so um, kind of somewhat of an introduction. I do uh, sysadmin stuff uh, normally, um, DevOps, whatnot. Um, I guess awesome. that's about it. Yep. Thanks for joining. Okay, let me share the screen, I guess, in the white paper. I'll do that. Mm -hmm. uh, can you all see the white paper? I guess. Yeah. All right. So we got this. Um, I mean, how, how do you want to do this? You want to? I think that right now we have a, a working drafts here. I think uh, the. Uh, my uh, personal take is that uh, this has a uh, good foundations, uh, but uh, in my opinion, it's uh, heavily weighted on AI, but very lightly touched on the cloud native, especially the ecosystem that we have here today in CNCF. So I would rather see, we want to set a structure first, uh, what should be in this white paper? Because right now, uh, Linux Foundation has this AI and data foundation as well. So if I uh, have too much pivot towards the AI, a technology and a technology is may not do the um, good, you know, may not serve the purpose as a, a CNCF white paper. Uh, so if we are agree on that direction, so what we need to have the specifics about CNCF and what's the values in the face of the, you know, um, we have the supervised and generative AIs, what are the technologies over there, what we see as a potential um, directions and what's uh, the state of art in terms of uh, production system and uh, innovations. If you can set out this uh, high level agenda and then we gather the right community to get to get input, that could be a very productive session, I believe. Okay, so you, do you wanna go some sections on the, um, on the white paper and ask for feedback for, from some of the members on the call? Oh, uh, I see a lot of people has already shared their opinions. Uh, we do, unfortunately, we do not have everybody here uh, who are working on the white paper here today. Uh, so maybe we can, I can quickly give a summary and feel free to cut me off uh, if you need some, if you have some specific questions. Uh, so I think uh, right now, Alex has done a, a great job uh, giving the history of AI, the ter uh, terminologies and technologies that's used in AI and how AI uh, is connected with infrastructures, uh, with cloud native technologies, and that kind of thing. Uh, so that was the, in, uh, the introduction and uh, the current patterns of AI within the CNCF is about. I feel that um, um, these are sections um, we can get a lot of feedbacks on. How should we proceed with this uh, existing text? And a lot of this information is very helpful for readers in this community. Uh, but uh, to my earlier point, um, we already have the uh, this paper I, as current states is very heavy on AI. Uh, so we have to balance out what's the rest of the uh, the Red House need to look like. So if we can just focus on 
what's the state of us on the patterns of AI, ML within our community. I feel that is something we need a lot of attention and probably people can share their experiences within CNCF and even beyond in the industry. Let's uh, share. Uh, yeah, let's pause for a second here. So this is great, uh, I mean, so I think, I think we have a lot of folks on the call. So based on the comments from Hamin, does anybody have any comments about how uh, cloud native AI should be defined or what are the things that cloud native AI should be tackling? So, I mean, I, I kind of, uh, I didn't, well, I don't have thoughts of where, but like I kind of asked the questions of like what type of models, you know, within Hugging Face or whatever would be acceptable within a CNCF project, right? And kind of stuff like that to kind of gear toward what is acceptable use and what's not, right? Right. I, I mean, there's, uh, I think the LLMs that are, are basically standard large models from information picked up from the internet, right? And then and then there there are things like uh, RAG now, which is retrieval augmented gener generation that allows you to use uh, context on those. And so a lot of people are using um, vector databases to store these different contexts. And I think uh, in the case of cloud native, uh, you know, you will use something like cloud native relevant uh, contacts, uh, whether it is to uh, get information on Kubernetes clusters or cloud native architectures or observability or security. So you you have all these different kinds of applications. So I think that's how AI can help cloud native. And obviously with the other aspect that we want to see is uh, how cloud native can enable or make AI better, right? So, or, or help with running the AI type of workloads. Does that make sense? Yes, uh, yeah, I mean, but yeah, I guess I get, um, so like, I guess part of my question was like, what licenses would be acceptable and, you uh -huh. know, that, that type of thing and, for but not models. for models yes know? yes yeah and and you know like what how much of how much of the process to create the model needed to be open source in order for it to be acceptable or kind of go through the the process of of becoming um at least integrated within a cncf project um you know make that smooth or whatnot yeah i think mit or apache type of licensing will work and that's a standard open source model. Obviously, you don't want to go to anything that uh, GPL or on some of these new um, licenses that are coming up. Right. Business, and business license. and I don't think most of those models are. So, I mean, yeah, I, I think that that can, should kind of be like stated, you know, which, um, you know, what what is useful and what is not, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I think uh, CNCF has gone through this uh, model, uh, the licensing issues uh, in the near, very not too far away past. And so the licensing issues has to be taken seriously, uh, not to be conflicting with the business and open core kind of type of license. Uh, I think Hugging Face, I'm not 100% sure, Hugging Face may not have the same compatible license as uh, CNCF. So I suspect that is a POC can help the you know, general counsel can give us more guidance. What's the right way to collaborate with a hacking phase? Yeah. Don't see any licensing on some of these models, but yeah, that's a good point. Yes. And that was, that was also what I noticed too. The, yeah, most of the models did not have licenses dated and I mean, you know, there's, I don't think anybody publishes models with like S bombs or anything else where you can kind of figure out where the, inf where the data came from. Right. So. Um, if you look at the, the uh, for stable diffusion, if you look at the license on the, on the top, uh, on, actually, yeah, you are right below it. If you look at the license, uh, you have to scroll up a little bit. 
Rob. Yeah, so your mouse is right to point into it. License. Uh, the uh, next to the purple line, that's a license over there. Oh, yeah, yeah. there it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. This is a S size C and C community license. Yeah. So many of the license are dual um, licensing. So I suspect that is nothing the same way as the CNCF project. Yeah. Yeah, I think we, we need to incorporate some of this and maybe in the white paper or some. Okay. Some disclaimer of the license or, or the different licenses. Uh, but yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, I wanted to add, add uh, a couple sorry. of things. On. Sorry, oh, RP. Uh, I just, Victor is actually has his reins. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, first of all, the, the scope, because I've been dealing with several um, collaborations that seem in a discussion about what is cloud native. Uh, so I believe, first of all, that that CNCF definition of cloud native, that's where we can start. Uh, when it comes to actual technology that should be included, like, like Huaming was mentioning, um, I believe it should focus on container-based. However, it should go beyond that because what's happening is in the current world, for example, in the, 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 the telecom world, um, cloud native is really hard to do container only. So that's why in, in, the, in reality, it's going to be, be not only bare metal, but also virtual machines, containers, and more and more web assembly. So, um, so in, in the, the actual technology should be discussed. I believe it should be anything CNCF projects and as a main coverage, anything that's not CNCF, as, as long as it's open source, possibly will be part of this discussion here. And when it comes to licensing, at this point, there's no, because I'm also involved in some discussion about actual, what is the, the definition of uh, what is AI and you know what is the open source AI, because this is involving not only code, now we have model and, uh, um, and data, and that definition is not complete yet at this point. So I think that's just the NTP, you know, uh, being washed on this at this point. That's a good call. I was about to say that. I think it was that Victor speaking. Are you talking about the effort within the OSI? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening. It feels like the owners of the open source definition of OSI have a reasonable, uh, I guess, credibility in, 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 in trying to brainstorm and decide what open source AI actually means. And then there's a, there's, also, I've heard a discussion of whether open source is even the right terminology for a model. So yeah. internally inside Red Hat and IBM, we've just been calling that the concept an open model. We don't even have language to describe it yet, even internally. Um, I'm actually really glad the licensing thing was brought up. One 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 really good takeaway from from this working group might actually be to have the different corporations here kind of get some feedback from our different legal departments on where they stand mentally on this stuff. Uh, yeah, I'll send a, no problem, Rob. Um, that might be, I mean, I've, I've got an open dialogue internally and I, I would definitely love to compare notes with other, with other companies. It's great. So yeah, this, these are some of the things that we can add to agenda items in the future and some of the, the meetings that we have and then invite relevant members from the different organizations to discuss. Uh, RP, you have the your hand raised. <laughs> yeah, I was just gonna like bring up a little bit about just the themes. Like in my mind, a couple of themes that are like really important now are obviously GPU efficiency and then kind of statefulness in terms of being able to checkpoint workloads and kind of resume workloads like in service of sustainability and overall efficiency. So I think unless, if those things are not there, maybe we should consider adding like the broader themes that we think can be covered under cloud native, if that makes sense. Bobby, do you mind just repeat a little bit? Uh, so I heard of like uh, three themes, uh, GPU, sustainability, and efficiency. You also mentioned there's two other themes I did not capture. Yeah. So, so GPU efficiency and like sustainability and then like statefulness of workloads and being able to resume workloads. 
to be able to continue like uh, training from checkpointing. Uh, checkpointing, right? Like I think those areas, I think in, in general, those themes in general, I think are very important. Being able to save uh, money and resources and do things in an efficient manner. Mm -hmm. Those things are going to be top of my mind. Andre, is the training working group inside Cubeflow? I think they already opened those topics in depth, no? Yeah, we've been thinking about several things, how we can, you know, suspend training and resume training uh, from the uh, from the specific um, uh, point of time. I think it's more a problem with how to run stateful apps on Kubernetes because Kubernetes was not designed to run such, such applications, right? Uh, hmm. Yeah, which means like running large-scale distributed training on Kubernetes um, like might be problematic, you know? Uh, so in this area, we definitely need to, I think, invest more time um, and working with the communities to see how we can solve these issues. What are some of the uh, challenges that you're seeing with uh, maybe more specifically for training? Is it capacity? Um, there have been conversations about DRA. Uh, with Kubernetes, is that something related to that or not? Yeah, I think it's more problem how to achieve stability, right? To if you, for example, imagine if you have like a model in, in this model required to train it or like, for example, like a couple of like weeks, right? So you need to make sure that you have like the stateful application which is run for, um, um, you know, in a multiple workers. For example, if you think about PyTorch, right? Like if you want to run a distributed training on like hundreds of workers, right? You need to have a hundred of instances running 100% uh, uptime to not lose your gradients, right? When you do your training. Um, so all these things, like we might need to think about how to run them um, um, appropriately on Kubernetes because many people still don't use Kubernetes for large scale training, as far as I know. Uh, but I believe like Kubernetes has a lot of power in terms of the portability and, you know, like, I think we mentioned this white paper about supporting different type of workloads, like not only GPU, maybe TPU, when you add any other like accelerators, right? Um, so I think like it, it can give a lot of power of users to do much more sophisticated things um, with Kubernetes functionality. Makes sense, yeah. That sounds like reliability is the reality. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, just kind of to add to that, I think the idea of big data coming into this world more and more to be able to build like larger models, like more like I guess better models. I think overall, as the big data ecosystem starts to like connect more with the ML ecosystem, like bridging those two worlds in terms of cloud native and understanding how the big data world has solved some of these problems potentially already. I think is an important kind of uh, thing to discuss and research further as it relates to bringing some of those findings over into the ML workloads. I think like uh, Andre's alluding to, how do we like benefit from some of their solutions in the ML world for like distributed processing and um, storing state, so on and so forth. Yeah, I know with um, uh, password cracking, they used to have um, pot files. So basically the password cracker would get to a certain point and then it would just like dump whatever it had. And then you could trench for that over to a new um, job, whatnot. So maybe, yeah, that type of thing. I, I'm not sure what else um, currently being done, but I would imagine that type of thing would not be too hard. Yep. Uh, Claudia, you had a question on the chat. Uh... Yeah, um, so I was looking at the uh, at the white paper, and there's a section um, diagnosis and remediation of cloud native infrastructures. I'm not really talking about that section specifically, but um, when we talk about cloud native infrastructure here in this context, uh, white paper or the group, are we considering uh, Kubernetes as the platform where the entire discussion is uh, is about, or or is also like VM or whatever else. That's that's a good question. 
Ideally, it's Kubernetes, but I, I think it will be good to hear from other folks on the call to see what their mm -hmm. their um, opinion is. Uh, I mean, everything in the CNCF has been based on Kubernetes, uh, in yeah, the, in the main driver. But I mean, maybe other folks are having different types of challenges uh, with different uh, infrastructure, and so it will be great to hear from from any on the call. I think uh, as the chart of this uh, working group, uh, we define our scope is within CNCF. So I think that's probably, that's why our focus is on Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that would make sense. It was more like a confirmation. But I think some somebody else also mentioned that this is evolving too. So there are things like uh, WebAssembly and, and that also, I think it's in the scope of this. So I, I think some folks are, Running infra inference um, with a WebAssembly service uh, on top of the model, so that's also within the scope. Uh, and that that part may not necessarily be running on top of Kubernetes. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of people using. Um, we I think the CNCF has the Watson Edge uh, as a project, and I think uh, most of the folks, um, uh, I see uh, quite a few folks from that community has already shared their views how to run. Uh, LIM on Edge using Watson. So that is a very interesting use case. And I don't think that has been covered in this white paper. So it has its own space here we need to discuss. So maybe yeah. add the uh, like Edge use case. Uh, yeah. And the uh, challenges. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Somebody else had a comment. Yeah, it's like here. I, I did mention that about WebAssembly, but I do agree with Humming. Mm, uh, Kubernetes being the central point of the CNCF. Uh, overall uh, ecosystem, uh, that should be the focus. And uh, on top of that, we can discuss about you know, special use cases like web WebAssembly and uh, web, uh, for example, OCI, which is um, you know talking about uh, uh, open container initiative. And they are talking about how to uh, make the OCI, the, the specs more user-friendly to AI ML workload. So those are not specifically for Kubernetes, but it's related. But I, again, I agree with Harming that Kubernetes should be the really the centerpiece for this whole discussion. Um, would it make, I mean, I don't know if that's uh, always um, something that people would assume um, reading the white paper, but would it make sense to state that in the executive summary? Because it takes a long time before I see any Kubernetes happening in the text. So I don't know if if that's always like implied that if something is coming from CNCF, then it's Kubernetes. I would assume that, but that that's my opinion only. It sounds good to me. So I, I think you can comment on the white paper and, mm -hmm. and address yeah. the, the comments. We got a comment from Rob with respect to the earlier comment about use of Kubernetes for training and scale. If I understood it correctly, that's changed a lot. Anecdotally, it's a default assumption in most of the efforts I'm involved with in terms of what's in the public domain. Perhaps you're aware of this. Oh, scaling, uh, OpenAI scaling. Yeah, OpenAI was one of the early Kubernetes adopters uh, in the scale in Kubernetes for a long time. I think I, I was at the KubeCon Berlin uh, 2017, and they were talking about scaling Kubernetes clusters. So. Wow. Yeah. So they've been around for a while. So I, I'm sure they have a pretty large. If, if anybody of you knows uh, someone from OpenAI uh, would like to get involved, uh, would be great if you can reach out and and have them join the calls and the working group and 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 provide their input. Uh, yeah. Let me let me see if I can connect some dots there. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So, anybody else has any other comments? Anything that from the white paper, uh, or Huamin, you can actually 
uh, request any feedback or any any um, comments on the call. Um, so if I may just uh, call out a few items here. So based on the discussion we have, uh, we have the topmost issue is on the definition of open open source, especially open source models. That needs to be uh, cleared, clearly stated in the white paper. And uh, that's where in conjunction with the licensing issue, as Jeremy early mentioned earlier, with the legal department's working notes on how organizations using models, uh, that will be a very good start. So we can at least have some common understanding how we use models and how what's our definition of open source models and how CNCF as a community can use it and what's the collaboration uh, guidelines, uh, for example, working with a uh, hardening phase. But I think that is the topmost issue in, based on discussion so far. And then the second issue is that um, uh, we have uh, discussions on Qflow for quite a lot at the moment. And uh, right now I do not see Qflow has been um, explained very well in the white paper. So if you are able to connect with the Qflow folks on the ecosystem, you have their inputs into the white paper. That's where we have um, significant improvements here. The third one, um, we have discussed so many technologies and think also innovations. For example, the OCI, I suspect for uh, ML workloads are especially models. This is a very um, cloud native thing in my opinion, and that's where bring a lot of collaborations between different uh, ecosystems. So um, I know uh, there's a few folks working on OCI registry, and that's probably your expertise, Ricardo. Uh, to bring these folks into the discussion and probably potentially working with Kubeflow community to see how things can, um, you know, what's their visions look like and what's the uh, working items in the future and whether that's something this can be put into the white paper, the state of art can be put into the white paper and then what's the future directions. And then there's a lot of uh, tech, uh, discussion on the infrastructures and actual technologies um, Kubernetes, containers, Watson, as well as the stateful workloads. And these are very specific technology-oriented uh, items. Um, that requires a deep dive into the technology stack as well as the use case. So we can uh, have a, a deeper understanding what's the current challenge and what's our, our CNCF community's solutions to these hard questions. Um, so. Folks have bring this uh, state of application, uh, especially on distributed training. If you can share your views and your use case in this topic, that will really be great. And uh, if uh, folks from this runtime and well as well as the platform can share their you know perceived um, perceived the solutions, um, that could also be a very productive. And I do not see a lot of folks from the other community here today. Uh, but we can reach out offline uh, once we have these uh, statements and questions. Yeah, makes sense. I've got a question for you all. Uh, actually, one minute. Thanks, sorry. sorry. Uh, I don't actually know how to raise my hand on this thing, but uh, you know, it's raised. Uh, about the registry implementation, um, we we want to gather folks who want to build a registry collaboratively. Uh, this discussion came up in the Kubeflow community. Well, I mean, how do we get in touch with the folks who are considering OCI? Um, like we're actively looking for solutions there. Um, there's a number of projects in the CNCF landscape. I think uh, that's one from Harbor. And that's another one, I forgot the name, the OCI registry is also a project here hosting CNCF. And there's a broader uh, OCI spec. I think that's a uh, that's one OCI spec community, a committee, something like that, who define the standards of OCI. These are the folks we can touch base on, and then oh, I thought experts. I thought somebody was already proposing it. Um, actually, this idea I just brought from Ricardo in a very early Slack uh, message. Uh, Ricardo mentioned this is something that the work group can uh, work to coordinate. So I just yeah. build his page. Yeah, it's 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 a it's an initial idea. So basically, we have to work with the OCI community and 
it sort of has to become a deliverable or a standard, right? So this, yeah, this is something that folks interested in, I mean, in the working uh, work, working together in, in this working group can actually work towards too. Mm. So I'm going to put uh, a link to a Google message in the chat here. Um, this is a the model registry proposal as it stands now. I'm sending it because, uh, you know, if you know folks that are interested in doing this in the open and want to propose alternatives, you know, it's not nearly anywhere past that point where we can't yeah. consider new ideas. Yeah, so I think uh, uh, we can engage with these folks and and collaborate. Yeah, thanks for joining. Oh, thanks for sharing this. Yeah, I think that's, uh, that would be really important. Um, I think like, so few things like from my side, like, uh, as I mentioned, like I've been in the community for the last like five years within Qflow. So if you want to be involved, like, I mean, let me know, I can like pass you the link to the, all the meetings and we can rise this kind of discussion on the community calls. We have like the regular community calls on Tuesday. So, because like we have like different working groups, as Jeremy mentioned, a training working group, like Altamel, pipeline serving. And like, if you want to be like involved in this community calls, let me know. Um, so if you just join this, the Qflow Discuss Google group that Jeremy posted, you will, you will get all the advice to our working group meetings. Um, yeah, also like, I want to quickly say about the model car. I think it's, it, it's, it's extremely beneficial. Like what Eric, um, just posted the link to the, what they, what they did for k -surf. uh, because I think like, we kind of like looking for fine tuning and training as well right now. And for the fine tuning of the large models, like we're required to, um, have an ability to download models on every workers and like similar aspects we do in case or but more for distributed kind of training um, uh, pipeline. So we kind of like try to see how this model car model car pr proposal could help for uh, large scale distributed training as well. Uh, so I think like, as Jeremy mentioned, like for anyone who want to be involved in the model registry discussion, uh, please and attend our calls. Because I need, I need, I think we need to find more folks uh, within this group who want to be involved uh, moving forward, right, Jeremy? Um, yeah, it will be really beneficial for for the overall like umbrella of components. Is there a link to I don't know meeting calendar entries or something for people who want to try and yeah. get engaged? Uh, yeah. So Jeremy, point me if I'm wrong, but I think you will have a call next week for the model registry proposal, right? Next yeah. Wednesday. Yeah, Eric, I will send that to you. Thanks. So, Eric, I, I didn't get your comment. You're very interested in Waterford, the, the case surf. Uh... Oh, sorry. Uh, well, model car specifically, but also just OCI based image formats in general. Got it. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, we, we can work with the OCI community as well. They have a very large community, so we, we could reach out to them and and, and share these uh, proposals. So we get them involved and get, get their input. Right, makes sense. So yeah, so I added a um, comment here. Maybe we, we might have to elaborate on, on this uh, bullet point. Right, I mean, do you want to um, talk about something else that, or get more input in, in a different area? Um. So, can we just uh, get people's uh, you know commitments to work on this area? Because um, I don't think a single meeting or meetings can sort out everything. Uh, so the document uh, draft is already here, and it's uh, everybody has the right to edit. So if you can put your um, uh, focus into uh, put your opinions and suggestions into the drafts, uh, either as a comments or as a, you know as additions, that will be great. 
Uh, so we know what the inputs are. And the second is uh, we probably need to have some assign some uh, certain people to work with different communities to get to get uh, feedbacks and also get their inputs into the you know for example these sections on current patterns and the sections of challenges. These are sections. And these are almost blank, so we need to have a greater coverage from different types and uh, you know working group. Yeah, we need we need an owner for each one of these, but right. uh, yeah. So, folks on the call, yeah. if you want to, I mean, we don't want to force uh, everybody, but I mean, you want to, you're familiar with one of these areas. Just put your name down and and provide your input, and at the end, you can add um, your contribution because we want to give credit to all the people who've actually contributed. Um, sorry, we had a uh, somebody else. Uh, yeah, uh, this is Kathy. Sorry, I joined late due to a conflict with another meeting. Um, I think I just heard that, you know, we should identify people to work on some sections, like, for example, the endpoints and the gaps of, you know, cloud native to infrastructure to support uh, AI, you know, workload, you know, either it's performance or it's, it's functionality. So I think, you know, that would be great if we can assign people to different, you know, sections. And do we have one section on the pinpoints that I know these are the kind of functionality sections, but I think, you know, before we dive into these functionalities, it's, it's good, you know, we identify what are the pinpoints, you know, the end users or current, you know, the either the AI developers or AI scientists, they are facing, right? So that, so that we can, you know, maybe create solutions or we solicit, you know, projects and to address those pain points. So we want some, we, we like first to identify the nails before we have the, you know, uh, hammers or we promote any hammers. So I don't think we have a section on pain points, do we? Maybe we should have a section, add a section on that. I, I can add that, you know, oh, here there's a, um, yeah. and then we can have some people working on that. Uh, if you know, if we don't have any people signing up on that, um, maybe if someone can reach out, you know, anyone in other communities or in like Linux Foundation, you know, there's uh, AI and data. Um, I think there's uh, that, you know, um, I think that there's that. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's called working group. It's a, it's a channel. Oh. It's, a so chapter. it's a chapter. You can reach out to them. Okay, I can reach out to, you know, some other science and projects. So they can help, you know, um, with this. I think solicit community members to drive this effort is another thing we should, you know, yeah. That's good. Do. So I think we can just uh, uh, highlight the the bullet point and ask for folks on the call who maybe would like to provide input here. So and then we can tag you. So so let's maybe go one by one. So performance. So anybody wants to add something on performance. Or, or contribute. Uh, you may have some folks who, who would be interested. You can add Jeremy there. Oh, we can add this offline too. Yeah. Um. But now we can call out. I think it's good if we can call out people here. I mean, who would like to to contribute? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We can do both asynchronously and whoever's on the call. I'll yeah, I'll I'll put my name on there. Um, yeah, sounds good. How about challenges? Anyone's name would like to put there or challenges or pinpoints? Anybody like to elaborate on some of their challenges that they're having and contribute to the the paper? I, I yeah, think. yeah, I to... yeah. I just have a good question. Like, um. Did we consider to add like you know the challenges around like easy to use and because like the thing is like I I kind of like you know um, uh, observing by working with so many the design is how to want to run these tools Kubernetes so the main main problem is all these tools like ML tools they're not like be designed to run on Cube Kubernetes right right now and because like the the personas of data scientists and personas of uh, DevOps engineers they're different right now like many people are just struggling to run all these uh, sophisticated tools top of Kubernetes. Because like, you know, um, we've been looking for adoption, even like from the Qflow side, right? Many people kind of like um, 
decided to uh, move with other, other technologies because of very complicated um, um, you know, infrastructure which stands, which stands behind Kubernetes. So I just was thinking about, should we also considering some sort of the maybe user experience or easy to use kind of challenge that we need to address as part of this working group? Um, because I think if we go and deliver tools like PyTorch, Thunderflow, JAX, or any other tools more closely to cloud native infrastructure, that will be beneficial for the whole AML community. Um, I think we can have have both have the high level, you know, user experience or simplicity user simplicity. We can also have some um, low level challenges, like you know, for example, if they have any challenge experience with you know, um, configuring infrastructure. I think also that's part of proper tools and also how to um all the you know all the resource you know um. Uh, uh, like GPU allocation, those things they have some hard to use, something like that, or it's it or those are not meet their performance or their resource utilization rate. So I I think anything related to cloud native, yeah, should be there. Yeah, because people, so we need to like really consider this that there are like there are different type of personas here, right? There are like ML engineers, data scientists, DevOps engineers, and how to bring these people together is like it's a very hard problem to solve, right? Because people who are actually like creating the models, they don't might be familiar with cloud native technologies at all. And maybe they, they shouldn't be, because they need to be focusing more on like writing the researches and the research papers and creating these models, right? Um so I think it's important to be honest, like from my past experience working with data scientists across the cloud native infrastructure. I'd agree with you, Andre. I think we hear that quite a bit where folks who are doing the actual ML work, they don't necessarily want to be cloud experts or you know, having to understand how to build Docker images or Kubernetes. So from that perspective, I think making sure there's like a user experience component to all of this um, would make sense to me. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I think there should definitely be a, a UX section, like specifically named user experience or whatnot for different layers of people. Mm -hmm. I think uh, also I think our targeted um um how to say an user would be it uh, could be AI developer yes I mean that also the AI framework developers and also the AI infrastructure um um manager or infrastructure administrator those are all um the customers I mean for from cloud perspective cloud native perspectives so if we identify you know the pain points they experience and that's you know uh, related to cloud native because they're using the cloud native technology, right? Yeah. It makes sense. Claudia, yeah, you had your hand raised. You can also, Ricardo, you can also add my name to the pinpoints that, I mean, challenges that section too. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I wanted to, to say to also add my name in the challenges, um, because I might have some example and also for the, um, usability. I don't know where the session I saw the title, but I lost it. No. Yeah, there's a user simplicity. Yeah, that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Excellent. Well, folks, we're, we're out of time. I don't want to, we're, uh, uh, yeah. so we, we, we still have the landscape. I think there's a CNCF landscape V2 uh, that is actually being developed by the CNCF. And I think we, we could use that for for AI, but we can actually discuss on how to tackle that and maybe the next meeting. So this is our first meeting. So Kathy, uh, Huamin, and I will work uh, to schedule the next one. Uh, uh, we still haven't decided on the cadence, but hopefully this time works for most people, but still we would like to get feedback on the Slack channel on what time might be the best. So we'll schedule the meeting, the next meeting after when we get it feedback from from a good time that works for most people does that make sense yeah that makes sense i think it's probably hard to find the time that's good for everyone probably yeah but we'll find the time that's good for majority of people right yeah yeah, yeah so the, this one doesn't show the history so i'm not sure that's needed or not like, like the security section that that's the content i put in uh, alex accepted so it's it's gone from there so i, I would take the security section Thank you. Uh, does somebody mind scraping the links out of the chat and posting them somewhere before we end this?
Sorry, which link? Uh, uh, out of the Zoom, out of the Zoom chat. Which link? Like, this uh, white paper link? No, the the, the the there's like a half dozen Zoom links uh, or links in the Zoom chat. I was just. Oh, you wanna you wanna okay. That makes a great point. So, so I'm gonna save this, and I'll post it on the Slack channel, uh, the chat, the okay. um, chat conversation. So we'll do that. Um, can I ask a final question about the white paper? Sure. Um. So what's the like expected deadline for this to be finished or, and, and also what what's the distribution process? Like where is this going to be published and how? Uh, I don't think uh, that line is already defined. So hopefully we'll, we'll probably have something before KubeCon EU. Uh, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. I, I think so. It's, yeah, it's a lot of the deadlines were around KubeCon, KubeCon but uh, mm -hmm. But it's not uh, set or or uh, so far. So uh, so it's up to us. Um, and the distribution channel is usually when a white paper gets created, it gets published on the CNCF.io website and uh, gets sent to all the different media channels, Twitter, LinkedIn, and and whatnot, and, and mm -hmm. share okay. with the community. Yeah. I think how, how when we finish that depends on you know how fast we can move forward. Yeah, uh, I think you know um, yeah as I, I think I agree with Ricardo. I should I mean better before the KubeCon EU so that you know we can uh, distribute the distribute the white paper. We can also make announcement you know in the KubeCon EU. Yeah, either in the TOC or you know through the tech runtime or other channels and other yeah channels. All right. I think sorry, can I ask a last point just to one, 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 so ahead, the difference? Yeah, I, I know we're over time. Sorry about it. I'm just like wondering, like, so I think Rob asked about like the, you know, our collaboration with Linux Foundation, LFI and data. I'm just wondering like what our steps there and um, how we should proceed, right? Yeah, I think we should reach out to the, all those groups and see how we can collaborate uh, together. So there's an AI.dev event in San Jose next week. So I'm going to be there. I think some of the folks on the call are going to be there. So I think it would be good to um, have conversations with some of those folks uh, and see how we can collaborate. And I know the KSER project is also in the LF AI and they were looking to join the CNCF or move from the LF AI to the CNCF because they feel they're more aligned with Kubernetes. So that's also something to, to keep in mind. Yep, thank you. Yep. All right, thank you. Let's keep the conversation uh, on the chat and we'll meet uh, next time, whenever we schedule the next, the next meeting. Great, thank you. Great, thanks, thanks everyone. Next time. Thanks everyone. Bye. 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 Okay. Where's my hang up button? Okay. Ah, there we go. <laughs>